I wanted to preach on the will today. The will. Uh, we do preach and say this book is God's last will and testament. The testator to it dies. He comes back as the executor to fulfill his will. Does anybody live inside of you that is God? The Holy Spirit. Well, well then the testator's already come. I, don't know, I, I have to renege on some things they say. You know, I read stuff, but preachers write. And then I recently read something that an old timer wrote like hundreds of years ago. And, and then I have to kind of back up and say, wait a minute. We are and can enjoy the will that God has written already. Because God came back to make sure it's going to be performed, to, to perform that. That's the other half of us. I want you to think about these things. But I am preaching on the will today. And we are going to use Luke 11, verse 2. Now, we've preached on the will before. The will of man, the will of God. There's the will of the devil. There's your will. There's the Holy Spirit's will. There's a lot of wills out there. There's your will. Right? And most people obey their own will. In verse 2 it says, this is uh, uh, what we what we generally say is the uh, Lord's Prayer, which is gen is really the Disciples' Prayer. Lord's Prayer is John 17. We, we know that. But for most part, people say this is the Lord's Prayer. He said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So we, we're going to use just those two words, thy will, or we could just take the one word, will. And we will go ahead and preach it. We want to make sure that it's verily, verily, truly, truly. I want this to be true. So we will preach this. Uh, and I hope today I preach it different than I've ever preached it before. Something new, something different. Father, bless now the preaching. That your will will be performed that we would not only learn something, but do something about it now. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. And amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've got it. And I don't want to give it. So. You can keep it. Well, we have an illustration today. You don't want it? I don't want it again. All right, so I won't call on you. Do I have a volunteer? So I don't have to put anybody on the spot. Would I have a volunteer? Shane. Shane? Where is Shane? Oh, he's in the booth. I, I can use Shane. Shane, would you be a volunteer? Now, if mother says no, and then the answer is no. <laughs> Luke, will you be a volunteer? Oh, he shook his head yes. I probably need two volunteers along the way. Oh, wow. Zach. Luke and Zach. The will of man. A formidable force. A force not easily reckoned with. It is the mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses or decides upon a course of action. I mean, you can just go to the Webster's Dictionary, you can look up the definition. I probably paraphrase this a little bit so it's not so choppy as the Webster's definition. But I mean, it is 
The mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses or decides upon a course of action. The power to arrive at one's own decision and to act upon it independently in spite of opposition. People might oppose it, but you still act upon it. The will of man, a determination of diligent purposefulness. The will of man is a determination of diligent purposefulness. You have a purpose and you act diligently upon that. The will. We got about 50 verses, just a little under that. Most of these you know, but there, there are some verses here that you don't know. I had asked on, because I was preparing this on Wednesday, I prepared this early. I had asked on Sunday night, uh, are there any verses about money in the Bible? Now, specifically, it will be according to the will. The will. And Sonny has said, um, the borrower is a slave to the lender. Is that a true statement? Now, now after he said that, I said, oh, I didn't even think about that. And then Buster said a verse. And I said, well, that's a good verse, too. I might use those. But he said, the borrower is the slave of the lender. Is that a true statement? I, I had to go back home to look. I could have looked it up. I have a concordance here. Is that true or not? True or false? False. False. That is false. I had said that night, Wednesday night, the word slave appears how many times in the Bible? Twice. Only twice. Once singularly, slave, and once plural, slaves. That's it. The borrower is, what's the word? No. Servant to the lender. Is a slave paid? No. A servant. Is a servant paid? Should be. So I, I told the wife this morning, even if you're the borrower and you're the servant to the lender, well, then there's still a plus side for you to get a little paid. Right, you're paying it off. You're you're building equity, something. You know, you're, and there there's a plus side to being the borrower, uh, but there's a bigger plus side to being the lender. But that is a uh, uh, now. I would have said the same thing if you asked me to quote that verse. I would have said the borrower is the slave of the lender. I, I would have said that. But it's the borrower is the servant of the lender. Here nor there, we're not bringing that verse up again for the sermon, but I thought I, I would just state that. The very first thing that I could see or would, had come to my mind, and I decided to put it down about the will. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Will. Will does appear a lot of times in the Bible. Like, I will do this, he will do that, well, that kind of will, as far as the definition of that will, is different than I, I will do his will. That, that The usage of will there is used differently. And so those don't appear uh, uh, as often. But choose you this day whom ye will serve. And such a choice is determined by the will of man. 6,000 years ago, a choice was made by man of whom he would serve. Opposition to the wrong choice was offered by God. There was an opposing side to making the wrong choice. It was by the consequences of such a choice that was something that would be resisted to making the wrong choice. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of, no of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. I mean that is, was the opposition that was 
offered in making the selection. Now skipping ahead a chapter or two. Both Adam and Eve were driven from the confines of the garden. You know, this little, this little area, whatever that area was, the confines of the garden, which they were cooped up in. And they were given liberty in the open world. They were released from the garden. Basically driven from the garden. Only to become the slaves of the world while sacrificing their freedom in the confines of, of Eden. You know, men think if you're confined, you are a slave, you want to be free. But, but the opposite of that is what is really true. This world is the home of man. This, wor this world that we live in is the home of man. And those born in it, give you one of the two words, are home born slaves. The two words have got to be, it must be applied typically or in type to, to all men. Home born slaves. There are only three things in Babylon. <clears throat> only three things in Babylon. This world is likened unto Babylon. That mighty city. You read it in Revelation 18. It says the sin, it, it lists all, a bunch of stuff. It mentions only three things. Stuff, slaves, and souls of men. That's it. Slave only appears twice in the Bible. Slave and slaves. Homeborn and those that are owned by this world. The world promises liberty, but all men are overcome and are brought into bondage. That's what it says in 2 Peter 2.19. While they offer them liberty, they are brought, they are brought back in again into bondage. Now I'm getting back to Adam and Eve, because I skipped ahead of a, a, a chapter. Not a book, just a, just a few words. Now Adam and Eve did not act alone in the fall. Now we're talking about the will, your will. Specifically, I'm speaking today is your will. There's a lot said in commentaries about God's will. I'm talking about your will. Adam and Eve did not act alone in the fall. Eve was coerced by the devil. Ye have got sin. And Eve helped her husband, Adam, to delve into the act with her. After she fell, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now we can spiritualize all this, you know, say Adam is a type of Christ, and since I can't live with her, I'll die for her. We're not going there to all these things. We're talking about the will, the will of man. So one's will becomes another's will, such as this. But Amnon had a friend. Now, folks, I don't want to call your name out and use specific things. Folks, figure this out. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. And how is Jonadab described? And Jonadab was a very subtle man, as was the serpent. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So Jonadab's got to be a type of the devil. Both of them were very subtle. As it is written, the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. One will, your will, submits to someone else's will. And men are delivered unto the will of them that hate thee. I mean, that's a, ver a, a, a verse. And men are delivered unto the will of them that hate thee. You know, the devil was real subtle. He hated Eve. Hated her. 
Oh, hi, Eve. You look great in that dress. But he's real subtle, crafty. It's like a salesman. Isn't that what drives this world? What drives television? Somebody has to pay for that. It's all the ads. Ever notice while you're watching the movie, as soon as the ad comes on, does the volume go up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The volume goes way up on the television to the point I have to turn it. If, if you think I'm hard of hearing, I have to really turn it down. The volume goes up. They want you to hear the ad. It's like a salesman persuades people. When Paul could not be persuaded, was Paul wrong, by the way? He was told by those that were told by the Spirit that Paul should not go to Jerusalem. Was Paul in the wrong? Paul was in the wrong. When Paul could not be persuaded, what did they pray then? The will of the Lord be done. The will of the Lord be done. And when, he, and, and when he would not be persuaded, we see saying, the will of the Lord be done. He stopped trying to persuade him. He can't persuade the guy. He did his own will. Men go about persuading men to act. And that's what I am to do, to persuade those here. You're lost here today. There's only one thing you need, and that's Jesus Christ. The first step on a thousand step uh, on a thousand mile trip is the first step is to trust Jesus. This is what a Christian is to do. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I am to persuade you. Persuading men, because men have a voluntary will. There's a verse that says that. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will. His own voluntary will. And that was offerings that were to be brought. He had to voluntarily offer that. His own voluntary will. And that will all men possess. For to will is present with me, as Paul writes. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. He wants to do right, but he can't seem to do right. Something else makes him do wrong. It is as if there is a struggle going on within a man that is a saved man. He who possesses the old nature as well as the new nature. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So I thought I would do this, this, this illustration. Luke, come my boy. Are you better with your right or your left? You can sit there. Uh, where, where's the, no, not that junior. That junior. Right here, my buddy. You're better with your right. Sit down. Anybody here know how I arm wrestle? Left or right? I'm a cheater. Do I wrestle with my right or with my left? I wrestle with my left. Because on my machine, I'm probably not as strong. To make my, the table go up and down, I use this arm twice as often as this. And most men are always stronger with their right. But I, I happen to be stronger with my left. So I said, listen, to make this fair, let's wrestle with my left. We'll wrestle with, our, with my right, with your right. And, and so we, we, we wrestle. And then, oh, and there's another way to cheat. Here, put your arm up here. There's a way to cheat. You, you, when you arm wrestle, you, you want to win an arm wrestle. You don't push it over this way. The first thing you do, now get up here. Come on. You, you hate me. Come on. We're so we're going to wrestle, and we're not doing this nonsense. 
you, the, the way to win in an arm wrestling contest is you pull your hand straight towards your own face. Pull this way. Once you got them started, now you can go over. There's uh, techniques to all this. I'm glad I came to church today. Yeah, at least you learned something, you know. But there's the old nature, and this is the new nature. The old Gary Tucker, and this is the new Gary Tucker. And we wrestle. Go ahead, try to pull me over. He, he might, you know, there'd be a day when he can do that. So, and we're going to wrestle, we're going to wrestle. But Amnon had a friend. Amnon had a friend. Come on, friend. And then, well, let's do our left, just, just for, to make it so you can see it. But and get up here, buddy. Lean in, but, you can stand. But push, push, pull. But Amnon had a friend to convince Gary Tucker's old nature. Go ahead, push it over now, buddy. Amnon had a friend. Two hands, buddy. Get in it. You see how that friend coerce the old nature. And the wrong choice is made. Go ahead. There's a war going on inside of a man, a saved man, like an arm wrestling contest. The one tries to overpower the other. And Paul asks this, because of the dilemma he finds himself in, who shall deliver me? And the answer, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. That's the one who can deliver him. Because our Lord is the stronger man. That would be the new man. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. Always remember this. The weakness of God is stronger than men. You can put all of mankind on one side, arm wrestling against him. God, I mean, he doesn't have to try it. The arm wrestle them all down. John the Baptist calls Jesus Christ one mightier than I. Getting back to this money, I had asked on Wednesday, is there any verses in the Bible about money? And that's what Sonny said, that, you know, the, the borrower is the slave of the lender. For the world, and I still say that's what's going on in Washington, it doesn't matter who gets elected, they want that money train to keep flowing. They, and Trump is messing it up. I mean, he's a billionaire, what does he need more money for? For the world, the bottom line is the money. The world has its financial counseling, yet so does the Lord. There are financial counselors, they operate as big financial firms, they operate out of banks to, to counsel people on what to do with their money. But the Lord has his counseling in this book. There's a verse about it, it's found in Ezra. And all the silver and gold that thou canst find in all the province of Babylon, with the free will offering of the people and of the priests, offering willingly. Remember, that's our topic. So we got all, all these verses about the will. Willingly for the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. Isn't this the house of God here? That thou mayest buy speedily with this money bullocks, rams, lambs, with their meat offerings and their drink offerings and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. 
It's kind of like the bucket back there. This willing offering goes in there. First. Then what do you do with the rest? The bulk of all this money. For us, that would be the first, for us, that would be the first fruits that are set apart for the Lord every week. But what about the rest? Here is the next verse. I quote it to you, I'll give you the next. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, that do with the rest of the silver and the gold, all the rest of the money, that do after what? The will of your God. That is Jehovah God. That's what you're to do with the rest of the money. You're to do with it that is after the will of your God. You get your paycheck and you should say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Well, I think I'll go for, you know what? I, I think I'll go buy a little cocaine. Now, is that the will of God? Or I think I'll go get myself a beer. Or I think I'll go, I, I think I'll go to that MGM place. Or I'll think I'll go, it, it, it goes on and on. Is that after the will of your God? That's what you're to do with the rest of the dough. What's our verse, Luke 11, 2? Thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. To will what God wills. If that is the prayer. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. To will what God wills is heaven begun below. Amen. To will what God wills is heaven begun here. This is what our Lord did. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. To do thy will will, O oh God, to do thy will. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold that do after the will of your God. Probably in the enhancing of the temple. So in a marriage, it's husband wife, and the Lord. Because they're one in the Lord. To do after the will. In a business, we'll use just a couple examples. In a business, it's all the partners. There's one order, one owner, it's the owner and the Lord. If there's several partners, it's the partners and the Lord, whatever the Lord would have. And how can we know the will of the Lord you know, listen, I'm not going to give you specific verses. You need to do this and that. How can we know the will of the Lord? It is spiritually discerned, as it says in 1 Corinthians 2. It is spiritually discerned. The will of the Lord, it must be, it can be prayed for. Thy will be done. You can pray for that. It is something that can be taught. You can teach the will of the Lord by delving into this book and doing what this book says. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. See, teach me to do thy will. Are you happy? Doing the will of the Lord brings the light to the believer. It brings the light to the believer. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is written, it is within, excuse me, is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. See, it brings joy to a person. It brings satisfaction 
to the believer as in the eating of food. My meat, as Jesus said to the woman at the well, uh, or to his disciples while he was at the well, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My meat, like eating, satisfying. His will, his work, and his way. The pinnacle of the Christian is to honestly be able to say this, not my will, but thine be done. Amen? The will of God, can it be known and obeyed by the world? Can it? Well, I don't, I don't know what it is. It, the, now, now, we know that it's directed towards Christians, but can it be known by the world? We have not because we ask not. That's what the Bible says. But the psalmist prayed for such a thing that the will of God be known and obeyed by the world. The, the will of God can be known and obeyed by the world. The psalmist prayed for that that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. It can be known even by lost people. So even the lost can know. There are lost people that do the will of God. Can a saint be as an angel? Can a saint be, be as an angel? The Galatians, I get this, the Galatians received Paul as if he were an angel, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. That's how they received Paul. Do people perceive you, boy, he's like an angel? Or they say, oh no, here he comes. See, like, are you like an angel? And angels do the will of God. We should submit as angels submit. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. See, a Christian can be as an angel and act like an angel. Our Lord gives the parable of the two sons. Doesn't he? The parable of the two sons. How many sons then are dwelling in you? There are two sons in there. There's two sons in your split personality. The old man and the new man. He gives the parable of the two sons. He asks each one, son, go work today in my vineyard. The one said, yes, but when not? The other said, no, but when? The question, whether of them twain did the will of his father? The answer is obvious. The one who said no, but afterward repented and went. But what think ye? Every safe sinner has two natures, the old and the new. Now, whither of them twain did the will of his father? Amen. The old man or the new man? The new man which became the servant of righteousness and not an instrument of unrighteousness. So then for some a warning must be given. That servant which knew not his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. That's what the Bible says. This is what it says. Thy will, is our title, is known by the scriptures. It is is our Lord's will and testament. That's what the scriptures are. His last will and testament. 
And God expects us to not only know his will, but to do his will. For whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And is not an, an, exec, an executor's job to see the will is performed? This made me, this made me renege on saying that Jesus must come back. He must come back, though. And there's part truth to this, to fulfill all the will in testament, to fulfill all of it. But in the meantime, is not the executor's job to see the will is performed? The word of God is not only a rule of knowledge, but of duty. So the Holy Spirit comes in. He's the executor to make sure the will is done. Thy will be done. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. See, the will of God could have all been experienced and performed and carried out even in the Old Testament. You know, God said, well, they're not getting it, man. I've got to go down there and salvage this. God always does that. Every dispensation, he does that. He says they blew it. He's got to come down, and Jesus came down to die for us. Are we the executor of God's will now? Verse says, thy will be done. Yet we have not the strength to perform it. Maybe that is why the Lord said it was good that he would go away. Did he say, you know, it's good that I'm going away? They didn't want Jesus to go away. So, uh, away, so he could send us his spirit to perform the will of God in us. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the com comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. As the executor, so that thy will, thy will be done. God gives us his word as a master copy of his will. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is the will of God, not the will of man. This book is not the will of man, but the will of God. Thy will be done. And all, and all who do according to his will, and all you do according to his will, you are enjoying God's will and testament right now. See, we think of money as our inheritance. It's what we think of. As a father gives his son an allowance, if he obeys his voice, a blessing, Deuteronomy 11, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you this day. In other words, you're going to receive a blessing if you perform his will. Are there not four seasons? Winter is a time of rest. Spring is a time to plant. Summer is a time to grow. Fall is the time of harvest. God's providences are to bring about the harvest of obedience. When Manasseh was in affliction, like winter, he besought the Lord and humbled himself greatly. See, he brought forth fruit. The rod of correction speaketh, it hath a voice, as it says in Micah, hear ye the rod. The furnace of affliction has its purpose. The furnace melts the, me melts the metal and then it is cast into a new mold. So you may be going, you're not in the will of God and, and you're going to just do your own thing. Well, God's going to use that and cast you into a new person. God's mercies are to make us do his will. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. God's loving kindness is the greatest of motivators for obedience. I drew them with cords of a man with bands of love. As in this, the love of Christ constraineth us. Constraineth us to do what? His will. Don't we labor, here, here was a good example, don't we labor for what we will receive? You know, like these awards and rewards in heaven, these crowns, not as a servant, but as a son. It is as this, as a king commands his subject to dig in a gold mine. We labor for the Lord, we dig in a gold mine. But the king, God Almighty, gives the servant all the gold he has dug. Everything we do, according to his will, is like gold. But he gives us all the gold we dig. Isn't that a kind, kind God? All the Lord commands us in his will is for our good, not his good. Sad to say there are those that resist the Holy Ghost. Acts 7, 51. While at the same time we are commanded to resist the devil. James 4, 7. I said a lot this morning. Maybe I always say too much. I don't know. And the thing you should have grasped, it passed over. I'll pray it doesn't. I pray, Father, whatever was to be learned will be learned. Thy will be done. The will. The will of man. It is a formidable force. It is a force not easily reckoned with. It is the mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses or decides upon a course of action. The power to arrive at one's own decision and to act upon it independently in spite of opposition. May we all pray the prayer, let his will become my will. God's will become my will. Thy will be done. Best regards. In Christ, your pastor.